Hello and welcome again. In the last video, we started discussing about the internal structure of the advanced encryption standard. And so we look a little bit about what the, uh, the structure here inside this box is. So we saw that there are some rounds and the rounds depend on the length key here. And of course, there's going to be a, a key schedule, which we'll talk about about that later uh, in the rounds. Now, there was a difference between round one and the other rounds. And it was that round one has uh, four layers instead of three. Now, these four layers are really three layers, but one of them is repeated. So what we're going to do now in this video is talk about uh, exactly what those layers are. A little bit more in detail what layers are in every in every round. So let's recall the layers. We have a key addition layer, which is a sword layer, a by substitution layer, which is gonna use an Xbox or a lookup table, and a diffusion layer, which is basically what we are doing is a permutations. Basically, that's what it is. So let's look at the rounds then. Now, round one, remember, is the one that is different from the others. It's gonna have a three lay uh, four layers here. Is gonna have the addition layer. Basically, what that means is I'm gonna take a plain text, which is a 128 bit block of plain text, and I'm gonna sort that with the subkey K0, which is the first subkey coming from the key schedule, similar to the key schedule, uh, what we did in the DES. So we take the key, a subkey, which is at 128 bit. And this one 128 bit, and then we're gonna sort that bitwise. Now the next one is gonna be a by substitution layer, so that's two layers already, and that's gonna use the Xbox, the lookup table. Then inside here, this is the diffusion layer, which is a shift rows and mixed columns. Basically, here is where we're gonna use do the permutation, and then finally we're gonna do another key addition with the key. Uh, K1. Uh, so that's four layers. If you count, this is key addition layers is one, two, three, and four. Four layers. And you see this round uses two keys key zero, uh, K0, sorry, and K1. So K0 uses at the beginning to add it or to sort that with the plain text, so 128 bits. And then finally at the end, you do another key addition here with the other uh, sub-key. Now, some people might say that this key addition here at the beginning is not part of the round. I'm gonna consider that part of the round, uh, basically, here. All right, so it has uh, four, four, four uh, layers, this round, round one. The other rounds are gonna have three layers only. So let's look at a general round. So round, let's say, for example, round I with i is not equal to one. So I'm talking about any round which is not the first round. So any round which is not the first round is gonna have three layers, which is gonna be the by substitution layer, which is gonna be done with the Xbox or the lookup table. It's gonna have the diffusion layer, where we're gonna do the permutation, and it's gonna have the key addition layer, and in this case is where we're gonna use the sub key coming from the actual key. Now remember, there's come some kind of a schedule also key schedule going on here for the AES, similar to what we did with the ES. So this has three uh, three layers, one, two, and three. So any round that is not the first one is gonna have three layers. The first round is the only one that has four. Okay, so that's basically the structure of the rounds now. So every round, it has the only structure. The only thing that has, uh, we need to actually look at it more carefully is what are in here in this uh, for example, in this by substitution, what is exactly what this is doing here? So basically, what is going to happen here is this is going to take a 128 uh, bit block here, and it's going to do a by substitution, and it's going to spill out another 128 bit block here, which is the that comes from the by substitution. And every round, and every of uh, every of these layers is going to do the same. It takes a 128 bit byte, and it's going to produce another 128 uh, bit block. All right, so let's discuss a little bit more about the key addition layer. Now, the key addition layer is actually we, something that we already did, which is using the bit bitwise sort. Now, what is that? So when you when you have the key addition layer, you have a 128-bit block that is coming from the previous uh, from the previous round, or it is the in the 128-bit block 
coming from the actual cipher text. So you have 128 bit block that we have here. So there are 128 bits over here. So from one, two, through 128. Now in, in the addition layer, the addition layer is the one that is gonna use the key. So the name key addition layer. So the key is gonna be another 128 uh, bit block. And that's gonna be the sub key. So again, 128 bit block. This is coming from either the plain text or the previous round. And you have the key, which is whatever uh, sub key is in here for that particular round we're talking about. And then we're gonna sort that one and get another 128 bit block. That's exactly what the key addition layer is doing. So for example, let's just uh, look at an example here. So for example, if I have a one there in the first position of the bit block and I have another one there in the uh, 128 bit sub key, and let's say I have a zero here and a one there, and let's say the last one is, I don't know, for example, a zero and a zero. So if you do bitwise, remember what you do is you do bitwise sort. So one and one, that will give me zero. A zero, the zero and one gives me one. And you keep doing that with all of them, exactly the same. And the very last one will cause will be zero uh, and zero. That will give me again a zero. So that's the key, the key addition layer. So that's it. It's just sort, basically. So that's the that's actually the easy part of the AES. So the sort part, the key addition layer, is the easiest to represent or to look at. Now, the other one is the by substitution layer, and this is the place where we're going to use uh, an Xbox or a lookup table. So what we're going to do is this. Is this. Uh, before we actually uh, uh, do the by substitution layer, we're going to take the 128-bit block, and it's gonna be divided into 16 bytes, 16 byte blocks. Uh, why 16? Because every byte is eight bits. So if I have 128 bits and I divide that into eight bits, I have 16, one six, 16 groups of eight bits. So basically what I have is 16 bytes here. So basically what is happening is, is this one. I have a, in this byte substitution layer, as an input, you're gonna get a 128 uh, bit block. What you do is you're gonna divide it into blocks of eight. So for example, from one, from block, from this byte one through eight, this is the first byte. Remember, because a byte is eight bits, you're gonna call that a zero. The next eight bits, which go from position nine through position 16, you're gonna call that 8-bit block or byte, this is a byte because it's 8-bit, you're gonna call that A1, and so on and so forth until you get to the last one, A15, which is bits from position 121 through 128, that's again another 8 uh, bits, and 8 bits, remember, is a byte, one byte. So I have in total A0, A1 through A15 bytes, that is, that is 16 byte blocks. So I take the whole 128 bit block and divide it in chunks of eight. And because it's every chunk of eight is a byte, then basically what we're doing is dividing that 128 bit block into bytes. Now, each of those uh, bytes that you see here, so we just use notation A0 for the first byte, A1 for the second byte, and A15 for the 16th byte is a byte, which is, a, a, as I, I said again, is an eight bit thing. So the the byte substitution is going to act on the specific bytes. What do I mean by that? So this is the original, say this is the original 128 bit block, which was divided into bytes. So every A0 is is 8 bit. This A1 represents another 8 bit. And again, this guy here, A15, represents another 8 bit. What it's going to do here is the Xbox, which is only one here in the advanced encryption standard. Remember for the DS, there were several of them. Uh, there is only one Xbox here. This Xbox is going to act on bytes individually. So it's going to take this byte here, which is A bits, A0, and it's going to transform it in another byte. And it's similar for the next one. The next byte is going to be transformed into another byte. 
and so on and so forth. All of this transformation, these arrows that are here, are going to be produced from here, from the Xbox. So basically, this the, uh, the advanced description standard, again, is a cipher that acts on bytes rather than bits. So that's what we're doing. So that's the byte, uh, this one that is here, the byte substitution layer. That's what is, that is doing. So I need to look at uh, how is that Xbox acting on the bytes, not the bits, right? The bytes, not the bits. Okay, so the what we're going to do is every byte that is here in this block, in this 128-bit block, before we actually do that, uh, ap apply this Xbox, we're going to represent that byte in hexadecimal. So we represent every of these bytes, the byte A0, A1, A2, all the way through A15. We're going to represent all of those in hexadecimal notation to use the Xbox. Okay, and the reason for that is because that Xbox is written in hexadecimal notation. So let me let me write let me show you what the Xbox looks like. All right, it's kind of big, um, and we will expect that because uh, of course we're talking about a uh, hundred and twenty eight bit block. So basically, what we're gonna do is one byte is gonna be represented in this way, and x comma y. This x is gonna be the first four bits of this byte. And this Y is going to be the next four bits of this byte. So basically what we are doing is we are taking one byte and divide it in half. The first half, we represented that by X, which is the four, the first four bits. And the last part, we represented by Y, that's the last four bits. And this notation here is meaning that these numbers x and y are represented in hexadecimal notation. And we're going to do that for every single byte that we have in the 128 bits. So we have all these notations. Remember, A0 through A15 represents the 16 bytes of the 128 bit block. And the way you're going to transform that is looking at this table. Now, as you can see there, you see a bunch of numbers from 0 to 9 here. Similar here from 0 to 9. And then you see some letters here, uh, A through F, A through F. And similar, you have something in here. So the same thing. So this is all hexadecimal notation. So what I'm going to do in the next video uh, is explain a little bit what what that representation is. How are we going to represent that byte into X, Y and hexadecimal? And then... I'm going to show you exactly how to use that table. Of course, to do to use that table, what you need to do is you need to know how to represent a number in hexadecimal. And so what I'm going to do is a little bit of review of what hexadecimal notation is and how to use it. Now, uh, most of you maybe have seen this before, the hexadecimal notation. So the next video may be a review for you. So... So if it is not a review for you, you don't know what hexadecimal notation is, that's fine because I'm going to go into the details of hexadecimal notation and how to do this byte substitution or this byte representation here so we can do the byte substitution. Now again, this table is going to be used to do the byte substitution. So this table right here is at the Xbox that we're talking about in here. And this Xbox is going to transform or that table is going to transform one byte into another byte according to what this table says in here. At the moment, this might not uh, make any sense to you, but it will in the next video. So in the next video, I'll go into the details of exactly how to, how to use this table to do this byte uh, substitution layer. So I'll see you in the next video.